So one of the challenges that I faced in my career is designing a cockpit for a lunar lander. And the reason this is so challenging is because um, the vehicle, when they come in, they're actually horizontal to the surface. So it's like they're laying down in, in the spacecraft. And then at the very end, the vehicle pitches up and the window faces the, uh, the landing site. And for the first time, they see where they're going to land. And from that point until they touch down is only about a minute. So they have very little time to assess the surface and find, you know, where is there a smooth area to land. And it's not like on Earth where there are r clear runways. Um, there are a lot of craters. There are a lot of rocks. Um, and especially for the next lunar landing, they want to head to the South Pole. Um, because there's interest there, there might be ice. Um, and so there's science reasons to go to the South Pole, but it's very challenging to land there because it's, it's very dark. The sun only gets about one degree, just slightly above the horizon. And so you're going to cast these very long shadows um, that are very dark. And so when you pitch over, when you look out your window, you might not see anything. So they're going to have a sensor on board. It's a laser-based sensor called a LIDAR that will basically uh, interrogate the surface and provide data back into the cockpit, and then they can, it will, the computer will create a display so they can see where are their hazards, where are their rocks, where are their craters, and then they can choose a safe place to land. Um, but again, all that has to happen in 60 seconds. So it's a very quick um, sequence of events that has to happen. And during Apollo, we looked back at the transcripts of what occurred during that. During Apollo, they had about 90 seconds. It was a different vehicle. But they were constantly talking back to Earth, to mission, the Mission Control Center. And I analyzed that, actually, how much time they spent talking to Mission Control versus actually controlling the, the spacecraft. And they spent over 50% of the, that 90 seconds communicating, just talking with them. And the reason was because there was a whole army full of people in the Mission Control Center doing a lot of analysis for them to tell them if they were safe to land or if there were any problems they needed to abort. Um, they always had that option right until the end to abort and, and head back to, uh, to orbit and then back to Earth. So it's a very quick sequence of activities that, that has to happen and they have to make a, um, a decision about where is going to be the safest place to land, the, the least likely to have hazards, um, and, and land with you know, enough fuel remaining so that they can touch down safely and get back off the surface when they need to return home.